again, and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And here we are, well into May now. Not really, it's just the 10th. Um, but this is the week we're going to have hot weather. Yay! So I heard, and also I got picked up by a guy at the traffic That's funny. light today. Not funny that you were... I just think it's funny. It yeah. is funny. So he was all like, ooh, I like your look. And I was like, <laughs> thank you. So. And it wasn't Louie. <laughs> no, it wasn't Louie. I mean, you know, it's always nice when it's someone else. That's so. right. <laughs> um, um, actually, what was nice about it is it felt like spring. The windows were yeah, open. It was Music nice. Was it wasn't blaring. a creepy person. It wasn't creepy. It was just genuinely like, hey, girl, you look good. Yeah. I like your hair. And I was like, oh, that's nice. Yeah. You know, sometimes you just want to be nice. And you just want to have people be nice to you. I always, if I see someone looking good in yep. a store oh, yeah. or a grocery shopping or whatever it is, I will always, oh, Jesus, <laughs> stop and give compliments. I also had five cups of coffee this morning. I have not had We're going to had a sip that. of coffee. Oh, yeah. I mean, Tammy after coffee is, you know, well, Tammy I, plus caffeine. So, so I used to do, I was really good about doing the intermittent fasting for a long time. And, um... I don't know if that's what works or doesn't work. You know, like, who knows, right? But it dawned on me, like, a few weeks ago. I was like, oh. I started um, having, I started by having a flat white at um, Starbucks. And then they don't have flat whites at Dunkin'. So we started having ma uh, macchiato. But the mm. milk was bothering me. So then I switched to almond milk. And then it became this whole thing. And then I realized I can make the things at right. home, right? Well, then I realized after Florida, wait a minute. I'm drinking all this almond milk mm -hmm. all morning long, so I'm defeating my whole yep. intermittent fasting. So now I've got to, like, I don't have my macchiato-type coffee until 11. Yeah. Well, uh, for folks back home, the advantages of intermittent fasting are that you are trying to extend just a certain period of time mm. where you're not eating. Mm -hmm. uh, Americans in general eat way too much. Mm. Like we have just been conditioned. We're in this sort of yeah. like feeding yeah. model. And so the science is uh, starting to say that basically if you have these longer windows where you're not consuming mm. actual calories, you can do things like herbal tea, yeah. black tea. So you want to be avoiding the milks and, yeah. and that kind of like stuff. Like I drink black iced coffee, coffee. normally. Yep. Yeah. But, but the idea is that during that time frame that you're not eating, metabolically, it's very good for your body. You're actually allowing your cells to go into an autophagy stage. The longer you fast, the longer it is. You start to release ketones. So you're actually mm. fueling your body yeah. uh, in a way, and you're using your energy, and your body starts to actually burn its own fat, which is good for you. Yes. So you know if you're looking for something to be like, oh, is there maybe like one thing? one thing yep. that you could do in your life, yep. start to well, go, I'm not going to eat from dinner time to lunch time the yep. next day. And that's what we found when we first did it. I was like, there's no way because Dan and I were a big, bre I mean, I do miss my big breakfast, but we used to eat a huge breakfast, like scrambled eggs with spinach and meat and, you know, delicious stuff, yep. right? So I was like, how are we going to, you know, like, how is that well, going to work? First of all, you can have that for lunch. Well, but <laughs> the reality was, was that we did it and we realized, oh, apparently Breakfast was just a habit. Right. Breakfast was not a need. And w what made me know it was going to be okay is there were often times on the weekend, like on a Saturday, where we'd get up and start doing things in the yard, and it'd be 3 o'clock in the afternoon before you've eaten. Yep. And you weren't starving. So wait a minute. Yep. Why? So and, anyways, I had to stop drinking the macchiatos. At yeah. And, and, and <laughs> honestly, one of the things we're trying to incorporate for our own lives is, you know, people who watch the show know, like, sometimes I'll do a three day fast. Mm. Sometimes we'll do five. I've done up to seven days. Yeah. I uh, you know, and, and I'm going to try a 10 day one or try another seven day one sometime. But um, Linda Lagana, actually yeah. a friend of ours, moved down to Florida, but she suggested years ago, she said, you know, she's a very attractive mm. lady. She's on the older side of, you know, yeah. things, but she looks fantastic. And I was kind of like, hey, what's your secret? <laughs> and one of the things she said was that she uh, doesn't eat from Sunday night to Tuesday lunch. Huh. So it's just basically you go, oh, I don't eat on Mondays. And so... We've been trying to incorporate that into our huh. weekly schedule, have not had success yet. I broke down at five o'clock yesterday because, uh, one, because it's so short. I mm. think the day itself just yeah. felt like, you know, like if you know it's a three-day one, the first day when you're actually the most hungry, I find, 
um, you know, you get these waves of hunger. And this is the thing, and this is important for folks who do want to sort of pursue a more healthy life. I guess a lot of people think that when you get hungry, that feeling is just going to build and build and build. Mm -mm. And so people are like, I'm hungry, I must eat. Mm. That's actually a hormone called, grem uh, I call it gremlin. That's not the right term. I think it's gremlin, Gre gremlin, something like that. Um, but what happens is you get hungry, that wave hits you. But we all know, because yep. there have been times when you get hungry and you just don't Keep, have the right. opportunity to eat. It goes away. And so I think that's a really important thing to internalize mm -hmm. if you want to try this, is to be like, oh, you're going to feel that hunger. Yep. Sometimes you feel like I actually get really nauseous. I get hmm. this like, whoa, feeling. But it lasts maybe between two minutes and maybe sometimes your tummy will rumble for like five minutes. Yep. And then it stops. Yeah. And so if you could just ride that wave and trust yourself. Now, here's the other thing about fasting that I really enjoy and that I think is important is you learn to trust your own body. Mm. You learn to trust your own instincts. You learn to listen to what your body is yep. telling you. And sometimes it's being like, feed me, feed yep, me, yep. feed me. And you can be like, well, let's see what happens if yep. I don't, right? And so you actually start to build this, this reconnection. Yeah with your physical yep. corpus in a way that I think a lot of us have lost yep. sight of. And so I, you know, I it think is, it's I a, mean, there's so much to, there's so much to the way our bodies work and everybody's is different and everything doesn't work the same for every single, you know, there's so much variety there because there's times that, I mean, Dan will attest to this. There are times when it, I must eat, like, I'm one of those hangry people, but it's not all the, like, but right. it's, it's not like, it's not consistent. So I don't, that probably, it's probably uh, lack of calories with, in combination with a hormone, you know, like in combination with anxiety or yep. in combination with something else. And then there's that moment and Dan will be like, yeah, you need, or I get really dumb sometimes. And, and I know I that's mean, hard to believe. <laughs> well, we've all met me, so <laughs> uh, maybe faster makes me smarter. But, um, but that's actually a really good point. And for folks who are interested in pursuing this, one of the things that people need to, to really be cognizant of is how ladies and men fast is mm. actually quite different. And if you are still menstruating, you actually do want to be uh, cognizant of when in the cycle you're doing it. Mm. Like we've done it, you know, we've timed it over the, the, the yeah. years that I've been doing this now. And initially, like one time I was just like, oh, oh this is it? not right, this you know, is wrong. Yeah, and also cause I'm anemic. Yeah. And then I was like, well, no, because wait, your well, wait a second. Right. Like my entire body was like, no lady, you gotta like <laughs> eat something you're about to like. Like pass out. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I think you know that. You like do I know. think there's times, there's r rarely a time when you're so hungry, but when that feeling comes on you that you're like, oh, and, I think I'm actually dizzy. Right. You know and, you have to And something. the thing is you might be, you know, dizzy, but again, a lot of these things can can be you just mm. reconnecting with your and body. And drink water, drink a lot of water. I remember years ago I read and I was like, I who knows if it's true or not, but they were just saying if you just in added, I think it was, it was a small amount of water. It was, maybe it was a quart of water a day. You know, nothing crazy. If you just did that and didn't change anything else, that over a year you would probably lose 10 pounds because your body just is going to function better. And and honestly, I've never done any of this for weight loss. No, but I, one of the things you do actually, what does happen is your own body starts to eat your yeah. own fat yeah. stores. And so, you know, like we all have like, you know, tummies and stuff. And I, and so every time I do it, I'm like, oh, I can tell the little boot yeah. is going like, uh, that's an Afrikaans word, little tummy is going up. You know, it, it does go down. So there are health benefits. You know, a lot of people do it for weight mm. loss. Uh, you'll lose between, you know, two and five pounds yep. in a three to five day or whatever, but you generally gain it yeah. back because it's mostly water weight. But you do start to lose those fat stores, yeah. which I think for right. a lot of us is kind of what you want, right? Like you want to be yep. like, well, I prefer it's okay. I didn't right. have the third little roll yep. there. You exactly. Know? Um, but honestly, I was shocked. So I read in the newspaper a couple of days ago, in case you never knew, that apparently the science now says that 
Living a healthy lifestyle may extend oh, no. life expectancy. Ex imagine that. And I, I mean, I read the headline and I was like, oh my goodness. Like, have people become, I don't know, like, like is dumbness it's contagious? It's a thing. I don't know, but I really, there are, there is a lot. There's a lot that seems to have changed. And I think the whole COVID thing just exasperated all of it. Um, a lot of, just have, more people seem just totally clueless like just they don't know basic things and people are definitely meaner me well again but that's, that's social why media. you know i was mentioning that yes and i think that comes from social media i'm not sure where the dumbness comes from so um well so so i got into a bit of a spat with with a friend i would regard as online recently and i found it so interesting because she rightly was making an argument and it was about abortion right and yep. so that is one and and there, it's no mistake that this was released now the leak came yep. out it's supposed to uh divide people again right. they're like what is the new thing the democrats are using it for fundraising they are directly lying mm. to people in new hampshire because here's the point all the supreme court justice and this is a leaked decision it isn't even out yet was saying is this is an issue that needs to be relegated to the states because mm -hmm. there isn't a constitutional right to yeah. it. So this friend was saying, but you don't understand, Carla, this is an emotional issue. And I'm like, I get it. It's an emotional issue. But if we are going to say that we can no longer have logic and reason and rationality as the basis of how we legislate, yep. then like we're in La La Land. Right, we're, we're, we're in the movie Idiocracy. We've so, gotten like the... So when I was driving here this morning, actually right after the guy was chatting to me, I was like, oh, and I thought, look, your because I saw this clip, it was it was uh, it was actually like um, two MAGA, like a black MAGA guy and a girl. They look kind of funky, and they had their MAGA hats on, and they were at some parade so or something. And it was clearly like there were two different you know factions there. And there was this beautiful angelic looking girl. Her head was shaved. She had a little face tat or a flower or something, right? So it was sort of this juxtaposition. And they were talking, and it was very respectful, but she was, she was so emotional about her emotions. She was just like, but I feel right. this way. And I really did feel for her, but I was like, look, your emotions, how you feel about things are 100% valid for your life. Right. Here's the thing. You can't write laws and you can't no. legislate on people's feelings because just what we just said to each other tammy and i feel differently about things so how would we even write a law that we agree right. on right so feelings are subjective and they are valid but they are not objective therefore we cannot legislate your feelings and you know what that that makes me think of something because i don't like when we do this um that's why i do not like when we name laws after individuals you know somebody dies and the girl who died from the ice that came off a car oh, jessica right, right? Yeah. so apparently her name was jessica and I've, it, I'm not diminishing anything about that situation, but too often the law, you're almost forced to vote for it because if you don't, you don't care about Jessica. Right. And it, when you're like, you know, I'm just looking at the actual um, language in the law and is this the way it should be? Not because we, in those cases, I do feel like it is has emotion has been brought into it too much oh that's why they name them yep. i mean the minute it's a named bill you know you're being manipulated yep. into something and the question becomes there is already a law that says thou shalt not kill right and so whether it's because the ice came yep. off your truck and killed someone right, behind you right. or it, you know, like, so, or I right. shot you on the street. These are the same outcomes. And where we went wrong as a nation and where we went wrong with our legal system was trying to say we're going to parse out every one of these things in a different way. Mm -hmm. There is a crime already on the books for everything. <laughs> and all we're doing is like we're trying to parse out these individual situations so, that are unnecessary interesting that makes a good transition to something i wanted to say um 
or wanted to talk about. So we were set talking yesterday, uh, Dan and I and my, our friend Lorraine were in the car because we drove up to see if the fire at Rock Rimmon was still burning. I don't know if you know, there was a fire at, on Rock Rimmon yesterday. Oh, wow, no. So I happened to see it in my Facebook feed on, um, oh, I don't know, what's happening in Manchester or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's a Queen City one and a Manchester one um, that Scott Godzik writes. And um, it said that there was a fire at Rock Remen. And I was like, oh. And then people were posting pictures. And there was, you know, this giant plume of smoke. And I was like, oh, there's a fire, like a big fire. Then they were talking about propane tanks that are being dis disposed of by the homeless were exploding. Because, oh, my God. Right? So I was like this. <laughs> okay, well, that's not good, right? That's really not good. Um, because if there is just a brush fire and a propane tank explodes, chances are now you've just expanded the fire area. And if it's dry, you know, I'm just yeah. thinking, so we were driving in the car and I go, I don't know. I think it should be illegal to d just dispose of a propane tank and dance like kind of like litter. And I'm like, yeah, even worse than litter. I mean, that's just one of those <laughs> things that you're like, that's really not okay. That's really, really not okay. That's something that can explode and cause harm to somebody. That isn't even... I mean, it's bad enough that people throw couches into the woods, but the couch isn't going to explode and cause harm. So anyways, there was a big fire at Rock Rimmon. Um, I couldn't really get any more information. Um, there so were quite a few fire trucks there when we went by. There wasn't any smoke at that point. It was started at like, I would say 2, 2.30 in the afternoon, which doesn't make me think it was the kids because I don't think the kids were out of school yet. Um, I mean, I will say this, <laughs> uh, and, and I can prove it. Uh, Years ago, I think it was in 2013, uh, Louie and I were walking in Rock Rimmon and we came upon what was just the start of something that could have been a very mm. serious fire. You know, sometimes people will make these pyres yeah. against a tree. And this honestly was a pyre and someone, it looked like it had been purposely lit Jesus. so that, you know, I don't know what. So, I mean, it definitely felt arson right. like it looked like oh, somebody like started if you a fire. were right. going to start a fire to try and burn down a part of the park this is what it would look like and we just happened to be there with the dog and we saw it and we put it out and yep. you know it was kind of like you know Ooh. at one stage we're like uh, i was like are you gonna pee on the fire <laughs> <laughs> are we doing we're, this? how are we doing this you know we were stamping it out and you know we had our jackets off and we we're putting yep. out the you know the leaves and everything and uh yeah, so, I mean, that's... that's it was just, by, I don't know, and I, I realize this is based on emotion without having actual details, although I was just going by accounts that were in this thread of people saying it was in a homeless encampment and all that. And I thought, you know, I'm, it, it is getting really old because there are way too many places that should be able to be enjoyed. I mean, we both know that, like, the bike path, um, if you go down anywhere near the Piscataquag River, I, I, you know, uh, Victoria talks about all the time over the rail trail over the, uh, near her house. And it is, it's just really creeping into all of our space. And it's not, you know, I pay taxes for, re I, I don't get a whole lot back for my taxes as far as I'm concerned. And one of the things I do want is the green space and right. a park to enjoy. And peaceful and enjoyment. It, when, when and the not, th some of these people are really, yes. I'm sorry, there's some shady people yes. out there where I don't feel safe. No, and I'm and a it, pretty tough right. girl, you know. Um, so so I, I'm not, you know, I, I I can appreciate that there are there's um, problems with housing and I can appreciate that there's people struggling to find places to live, but most of those people are already staying in the shelters and staying with friends and whatnot. So they're homeless, but they're not living out in the woods. And um, a lot of the people that are living in our trails and in our parks, li quite literally, whether people want to hear it or not, you, it, you take out the slice of the people that are mentally um, in need, and the rest of them are just bums. These are people who choose to live in your woods. That's that's just who they are. Um, and you know what? Even and we've talked about this before. For me, it's kind of like, look. I have a lot of compassion mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. I, I'm like, you know, this is uh, this is sad and it's unfortunate, but at some stage you have to decide. Like, have to are decide. you a ward of yeah. the state or are you going to take personal yep. responsibility for your own yep. actions? It's like that one guy that used to stay <laughs> in the tent, right? And I'll, if I run into you and you don't look too sketch, I will chat to right. you, right? right. So I, I stopped and I asked him. It was him and his girlfriend, and they were living in a tent. They'd made a nice little space. And if I see the folks out there, 
I, you know, I'll be like, hey, what's your story? Yeah. And then I'll be like, look, at a minimum, if you don't want me to call the cops on right, you. Right, keep it clean. Then keep this area clean. And, right. uh, you know, we'll come drop bags for you from We Heart West or whatever, right? But th it seems like that part of the deal never, never even happens. happens no. right? They say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. So this guy's story was he was in construction. He fell off a ladder. He got an injury. He got prescribed opioids. And then he became a heroin addict. Yep. So And then a fentanyl addict, right? So these... This is the story we've heard a hundred mm -hmm. times. So, you know, yes, a lot of compassion for addiction. But at some stage, again, you, you can't have fix to, his addiction. He has to fix the you addiction. You have to, yes. And and the more we enable these people to continue with their addiction, mm -hmm. it's not compassion. No. It is not compassion. It's enabling. To, it's enabling. And it's what we all know based on the science of addiction. It's like, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. You know, in states like California, they are now giving them crack pipes <laughs> and they are giving them fentanyl and heroin. It's like and it's like, no, I don't want that model yep. here. It is not compassion. It's not how we solve the problem. How you solve the problem is you let people hit bottom. You tell them you can't live in our woods and you have to get yep. your life together. It's your life. So on a happier note, two things. Um, if you're a gardener or you'd like to start being a flower gardener, mostly flower as vegetables is a different world. Um, I did find uh, the New Hampshire Federation of Garden Clubs, which you can find them online at nhfgc.org, New Hampshire Federation Garden Clubs. Um, they put out a list of all the plant sales, which oh, I thought was really cool. Um, the ones in nearby towns, um, Saturday, May 21st, Goffstown Community Plant Sale at 8 a.m. on the Town Common. The following week on the 28th, Bow Garden Club Plant Sale 8 to 1 at the Bow Community Building at 3 Bow Center Road in Bow. Um, June 4th is the big one. June 4th, you have the Dairy Garden Club Plant Sale, which I will tell I have spent many, many dollars at, from 9 to 2 at Robert Frost Farm on Route 28. Hookset Garden Club Plant Sale 9 to noon at R&R Public Wholesale, Wholesalers at on Hooks at Road. And the best one is um, June 4th and 5th, the Manchester Garden Club supporting the Manchester Animal Shelter Sale at 490 Dunbarton Road. Um, I believe that's nine, it says 10 to four, but I think it's nine to two. Um, that's the best plant sale for Manchester anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so nhfgc.org, if you miss those dates, you can find them there. You can email me at manchtalk at gmail.com and I will um, get back to you and let you know what they are. And the other thing, I was going to do a shameless plug. Um, so we had our wedding reception, even though we got married before, but our wedding reception at the Hill at McIntyre Ski Area on Friday night. And I have to tell you, it is like one of the nicest places I've been at for an event in Manchester. Um, the atmosphere was amazing. They were amazing to work with, very accommodating. Everybody who was there said the food was good, the bar was good, everything was nice. Uh, the atmosphere in particular is just really, really nice. Um, the hill. Even, even Louis, who doesn't really notice that kind of stuff, we were outside by the fire pit yep. and he looked around he and goes, he said, this is you awfully know, this nice. Is really nice. So location. they have a patio and they have indoor dining and um, they open for regular dinners because that's what they do in the summer months um, starting on Monday, May 16th. So next Monday for dinners only. And then on Saturdays, they are also have lunch. Um, but if you're out and you're looking for someplace different to have um, dinner, check out the hill at McIntyre Ski Area evenings starting um, Monday the 16th. And uh, so I second that. And then I, I will also throw a shameless yep. plug for one of my friend's places. It's not in Manchester, so it's a little ways mm. out, but it's about 30 minutes. It's called the Independence mm. Inn. It's out near Bow Lake. And uh, they've been doing, I think they do brunches on the weekends and then they do dinners from Thursdays through Sundays. The menu looks really nommy. It's, it's New Englandy, so New England flavors with a bit of a more farm to table funky yep. spin. So instead of say a lobster roll, it might be a monkfish roll yep. on a naan with, yeah. uh, with some Just kind something of different. fun mayo -y. I don't know, that one stuck in my head. I must have been fasting when I read it because I was like, yum. Um, but yeah, you know, get out there. Yeah, there's a lot um, of really good places. We um, One of the things we did when we had our reception is we had told people we'd rather go out to dinner with them than 
have people give us items. We don't need items. Um, so we did get a bunch of gift cards. So a couple places in Manchester. I've never been to the Chop House. I don't know how that's possible. So we're going to go to the Chop House. Um, we're going to Cotton on Saturday. Um, we're meeting out-of-town friends today at Elm House of Pizza, which oh, I fun. always like. I yeah. It's my favorite place. It's got great um, cauliflower yeah. crust. So people and like a patio. Me, and I think today we'll that. actually be able to sit out on the patio. Yeah. So uh, I think we're going to be out of time soon. Yeah. We, uh, um, if you have anything you need information on, if you know anything about what happened at Rock Rimmon, by all means, email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. You can always watch these shows on, obviously, local access television. Um, and then Carla does a great job of uploading them to YouTube and Odyssey. And yes. maybe something else. But. No, it goes to YouTube and automatically to Odyssey. I, I have no idea how that works. <laughs> I don't know. I, I will tell you this, though. So here's the, because I guess he told us we got two more minutes. Here's some interesting factoids just in general. Turns out, even with Elon on Twitter, still can't talk about lab leak theories. Uh, so all of that info is still suppressed, which I find kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, so if you are curious about that, go uh, Google Furin cleavage sites, which isn't half as dirty as it sounds. I was going to say, well, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Anyways, um, enjoy the wonderful weather. It's going to be in the, up near 80 as the week goes on. And um, we'll be back next week to fill you in more things going on in and around Manchester. Take care. Have a good one. Live free and thrive.